see the cross. Because the one thing that God cannot resist is a dirty, broken sinner who throws themselves on his mercy at the foot of the cross. He cannot resist you. His heart of love will be touched. He will reach out and claim you as his own. What a privilege. Perhaps the most thrilling experience I ever had in leading a sinner to be justified by faith was a young man from Las Vegas. You meet all kinds of interesting people in Las Vegas, by the way. Fascinating place to work. You even meet a lot of Adventists who, for some reason, get stranded in that city and phone you up and say, we need a little loan, we've lost our money in this city. I used to say to them, boy, how could you lose your money in a city like this? Oh, we had a little problem. I said, yes, I can believe that. Uh, Could the church help us out? We were getting phone calls like that every day of the week. Well, my wife says I'm an easy touch. I like to, to help people without really questioning their motives. But I found every now and again I had to ask a few little questions like the man who wanted the church to loan him. It's only a loan. It'll be paid back next week. I'll give you an IOU. He only wanted $100. But he said, you know, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. I've been one for ten years. I was baptized in Florida. I'm a faithful Adventist. So just for fun, I said to him, how do I know that? Oh, well, he grinned and said, it's easy. I go to church faithfully and regularly every Sunday morning. (laughs) He was one of the few we didn't help. (laughs) But you know, in Las Vegas, a lot of people who are what I would call the dregs of society. And we took our, we took our young people one weekend up to Mount Charleston, those beautiful mountain ranges about 30 miles out of Las Vegas. We camped for the weekend. It was Saturday night. We were sitting around the campfire and I sent the young people after a little presentation, I sent them out individually to meditate. The skies out there in the desert are beautiful. I love desert living. It really gets into your blood. And as they went out individually to meditate under the stars, I looked up and a motorcycle had driven right up within about 50 feet of our campfire. And a young man was sitting there, long hair, bleary looking individual. And so as the young people walked away, I casually strolled over to this young man and I said to him, uh, hi. Oh, I looked into his eyes. You know what I saw? I saw the dilation of drugs in his eyes. He looked like a zombie from another planet. A lot of young people like that in Las Vegas. I said to myself, this guy's not on pot. He's a junkie. He's really hooked. I spent time working in New York City with the junkies and I know what they look like when you meet one. I said, you've been listening in? Yeah. Hear anything good? Yeah, man. Like to come for a little walk with me? Okay. Got off his motorcycle and stumbled over and we walked together up under a large tree, beautiful moonlit night, and we sat down together under the tree. Now I want to let you into a little secret this morning. When the Bible says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me, that's probably the most important thing a born-again Christian can remember. Because a sinner in the pits doesn't need reason and argument and logic. What they need to see is the unconditional grace of God to receive them just as they are. 
Does God love you just as you are? Well, if you believe that, you've taken the first step toward helping somebody else to realize that he can love them just as they are. We sat down under the tree and I started to share with him. What do you think I shared with him? The love of Christ. I started telling him, you are loved. Me? Nobody loves me, man. I'm no good. I said, you're loved, you know. God loves you. And I love you too. You're my brother. We're in this thing together, you know. You are loved. Don't fight it. Let it happen to you. And how does a person know that God loves them? Well, you've only got to look at the cross to know what kind of God he really is, don't you? To see him hanging there between heaven and earth in your place. That's love, isn't it? That's love. Well, as I shared the love of God with this young man, despite his state of mind, the diseases that ravaged his mind and his body, I saw that little glimmer that told me that God's love was reaching him. Finally, I took my courage in my hand. I said, Ralph, his name was Ralph. What are you going to do about this love that God has for you? You're going to spend the rest of your life without it? Or would you like what God is offering you tonight? He's offering to receive you without cost to you, at great cost to him. He's offering to receive you and forgive you, to wipe the past clean and to call you his son. What a privilege. I wouldn't know how to, to do that. I said, it's okay. I'm going to show you how to do it. I said, it's easy. You just have to believe that what he's offering you is really the great evidence of his love. And by faith, receive it. How do I do that? I said, well, you tell him how you are and what you need. He said, don't ask me to, to talk to God. I ain't never talked to God. I said, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will talk to God in your place. Have you ever tried to imagine what it's like to be a junkie? With your arm filled with needle marks from heroin shots? Have you ever tried to imagine and put yourself in that place? What do you say to a God when you're a junkie? When the delicate nerve endings in your brain have been destroyed? You can't even think straight. Can God accept somebody like that? and justify them? Can he really? Well, I want to tell you, the God that I know who loves you and who loves me, that's what he does. He delights in accepting people like that because it's the most marvelous evidence of his grace. So I started talking to God. I said, hey man, My name's Ralph. I don't know nothing about you. Except what I've heard tonight. Every word I spoke, Ralph stumblingly repeated. But this here friend of mine, he's just told me that you love people like me. 
I don't understand it. I don't see how he can. I'm dirty, man. I am dirty. I live in the streets. My mind is a mess. My body's unclean. I'm in the pits, man. I am in the pits. But this here guy tells me that you love people who are in the pits. People who are caught with a chain around their necks. They are slaves of sin. He keeps telling me that you love people like that. I don't know how you can. But he tells me tonight, if I'm willing to let you, you're going to demonstrate that love. You're going to forgive me. You're going to wash me. You're going to call me your son. God, I ain't got too much faith. But I want it. I want what you've got to give me. Please give it to me. Most beautiful thing I've ever seen. To see that junkie with tears streaming down his face, letting God love him. When I finish praying, I just put my arm around Ralph. So you know something, man? You're not the same guy that you were an hour ago. You are now a son of the living God of heaven. And he started to shake. And those of you that have seen people coming through withdrawal, you know what I mean. We sat on his body, those beautiful young people in that church, so committed to seeing other young people find the grace of God. They sat on his body literally all night as he shook and as he cried. And they made a covenant for three weeks, 24 hours around the clock. They would never let him out of their sight until his drying out was complete and until his faith was established. What a commitment. Well, I want to tell you, the most beautiful thing that ever happened to that church was nine months later when I had the privilege of baptizing Ralph. Today he's a student at Southwestern Adventist College. He's training for the ministry. And he has a great burden to reach which kind of young people do you think? Those who've been afflicted with what afflicted him. I told Ralph that night the same thing I'm telling you this morning. You are loved. And as you respond to that love, your problems become his problems. Don't ever, ever allow yourself to believe that the growth that you are going to face during the coming months and years will be the test as to how God evaluates you. Praise God. Continue to fix your eyes on Calvary. That's how God evaluates those who are responding to his love. I praise the Lord for Ralph this morning. I praise the Lord for the privilege of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ where people can respond to the unconditional love that God has to offer them. I knew that Ralph was going to face a lot of pain in the future. I can think of all those nights, late at night, when my phone rang 
when the devil had got hold of Ralph and was trying to pull him back again, the nights we spent on our knees praying, seeking forgiveness and cleansing, but at no time did God ever leave Ralph to the mercies of the devil. How is it with you this morning? Do you know that you love this morning? Do you? Only those of you that know that will have the freedom to move on to do things with your lives for God. The rest of you are going to be hung up because you're still making mistakes. You've still got problems. When will it dawn on us that the solution to the growth pains that we are experiencing lies in constantly looking at Calvary, not in looking at ourselves. But as we look to him, what happens to us? That love comes into us. We have confidence to press on, don't we?